want to hide. <laughs> okay, how can I help you? What's happening? Where do I begin? Lori? I don't know. I don't even know. Okay, let's begin with the goal that you have for the year. Let's begin there. Um, I was hoping to, well, I wanna I want to hit the elusive 100 k I'd like to okay. ask that, but I think step one would be that hit and that one. What is the cost of your program? Nineteen hundred. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, hold on. Do you know how many clients that is? Um, I do. I think it's five. No, it's not. But it's fifty-three I, for the year. It's fifty-three for the year, and it is three five for five per. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Because I would. I let's say fifteen per quarter. Because you might not do five every month. So we like to measure things by a quarter because it's just easier that way. Okay. And what is the size of your email list? Same. Let me have that open. Um, Active subscribers is what I usually track rather than... um... Give me the total list then. Oh, God. I don't even have that at all. Okay. So so just for one second, these are metrics that you... Like I'm talking to you and I'm talking to everybody. I know exactly how many subscribers I have on my email list every single day. Right? Because th- these are the things that really matter. Right? Like I know what my show rate is. I know what my conversion rate is. I know what my webinar rates are. Like I know these numbers inside and out. Okay. So everybody, if you're wanting to hit a revenue goal in 2024 and you don't, you're not obsessed with the number of your email subscribers. You need to just like check that every day. <laughs> so I, on the list, I have 10,826, but active subscribed, meaning like not unsubscribed, 4,520. Okay. So let's go off the 4,000 because the other ones don't count. Okay. okay. Say it again. 4,000. 520. Size 120. Okay. Hold on. 4,520 at 0.02. So you should absolutely... Okay. So I don't want to say you should absolutely be able to hit that goal. You should absolutely be able to get 53 clients with the size of your email list. So let's look at why that's not happening. So how many calls are you booking a month? Um, my average for the past three months, if that's an okay number to go with, yeah. 30 booked. 30 booked. Okay. And how many take it? 21. And converted? Um, total sales on average. So, okay. I have two different programs. So should I just give you the combined number? I or- want the one that generates the most revenue. Four. Four. Okay. So hold on. So 30, 20, hold on. So 30 calls. Hold on. Whoop. 21 divided by 30 is a 70% show rate. So good job. That's good. And then four divided by 21 is, so you're converting at 20%. So not bad. Like you're not, this is not bad. Like this is good. So in order for you, okay, hold on. So you need, you need, wait, hold on. You needed five call, five clients a month and you're averaging four. So Mm -hmm. what's the problem? Just book 10 more calls a month. That's been the challenge. (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay, I was like, wait a second, you're actually killing it. What's happening? It's, it's, this is where I'm like, well, something is, something is definitely off because like, and I have scaled my ad spend in the last couple of months. So January and February, December, I expect it to be pretty dry. And then I upped my ad spend January and February. So I was booking more calls um, and I ran a sale in January that helped um quite a bit um 
So yeah, I don't know where the leaking is. It's been on average for the past year. I've been averaging three clients a month. So getting that like one or two extra seems to be so hard and I don't know why. Okay. So couple of things. One, um, I'm just trying to decide what I say first. Couple of things. Do you have a follow-up process in place for clients who booked a call and said no? Yeah, it's lacking. Okay. So I'm just going to write this down just so that we can go back to it. Okay. So follow-up. Because if you booked 30 calls, you took 21, right? I just did the math. Like, there's different ways we can go about it. I can say to you, okay, let's get your show rate up to 80% and then you'll hit the number. Yeah. Right? If you are booking 30 calls at an 80% show rate, at a 20% conversion rate, that's 4.8. That's five sales. Mm. That's four to five sales. So number two, we're going to increase the show rate to 80%. And you're going to book 30 calls at 80%. You're going to make your four or five sales. So then we're going to also add in a follow-up, right? A consistent follow-up, right? Where you will catch maybe one extra sale a month from following up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because do you have space to do 40 sales calls in a month is the question. Like these are all questions, right? Do you have the bandwidth? Do you have space? Yeah. So February um, was kind of a out of the ordinary in terms of number of calls booked. I had 45 booked and I took 30. So... It was, it felt like a lot. And I was like, I think I'm getting close to that point where I'd like to hire a salesperson, but um, it was doable for me. I think a lot more than that, I'd be like, I don't like this. <laughs> right. Okay. And so, so you had 45 calls booked, you took 30. So that's a 70% share rate. And how many clients did you get? Four. Four. Okay. So it's a 20%. Okay. So these are good. So I think there's, there's, two things without increasing sales calls, right? If we can get your show rate to 80% and if we can put a follow-up process in place. Okay. Um, and then also, do you have, what is um, the main objection that you're getting? On the sales calls at the end of the call? Uh-huh. Think about it. Why? Good question. Uh, I think they're they're needing to process like if this is the right decision for them because they've been burned so many times. They've tried. Just remind me what what the painful problem is again. Pain. <laughs> pain. Okay. Chronic pain. Yeah. So they've had my average client has had pain for anywhere in their body for at least average of 15 years 10 to 15 years and they you have really good results do you have a lot of testimonials i have a lot of testimonials but you know the i don't ever promise like pain relief it is like zero out of ten pain because like that's not a realistic thing when you've had pain this long but um, my average clients are reducing in their 16 week time frame they're cutting their pain in half so at least it doesn't sound like, oh my God, but in a relatively short period of time, yeah. So I do have testimonials. Yeah. Some videos, some interviews. Because I'm literally thinking if you can get your in if you can get your show rate up to eighty percent and you can even convert at twenty five percent, that solves your problem. Yeah. Right? Like that solves your problem. So we average about an eighty percent show rate. The yeah. Um, do you have any VA or admin help? Nope. No, all you. Yep. Ten. Um, because even at forty-five calls booked, like at seventy, per like you still had a seventy percent share rate, and you still had a uh, twenty percent conversion rate. So I feel like booking more calls is not necessarily the answer. 
because you can book calls. That's not a problem, clearly. That's not the problem, right? I think the focus really needs to be increasing that show rate and increasing the conversion rate a little bit. Um, and then also having a follow-up with people. So I would say, um, I don't know if you were here when I was chatting with Angela. I popped in. And I, okay, so just go back and listen because they gave her our call confirmation process. It's manual, but it works. <laughs> right? It really works. And that's for the show rate. That's for the show rate. And it's through text message. You could be like, hey, Alyssa here. So excited to chat with you in 10 minutes. Like just, and it's manual, but it's manual, right? So it's, you can decide if you're going to do it or not or how you can do it to make it work for you. Different from, because like I use Calendly and it sends um appointment, like text reminders. So if, okay, the difference between Calendly and a person is that the person is person, is personable, right? So if it's coming from, for example, like your phone, like I, if this were me, okay, and I, it was me, myself, and I, and I was like, I'm hitting this fucking goal this year, I don't care, I would go and get a separate phone and a separate phone number and text my people from that phone. And that's like my work phone and not my personal phone. I would just go and get like whatever phone was the number. I would have the number registered to the name of your business so that it shows up as like the name of your business. Pay the 40 bucks a month or whatever it is just for like the lowest data. You're using it on Wi-Fi anyway because you're at home. And you start text confirming your sales calls. Okay. Just from that. Like don't use your, I would never use my personal like phone because that's wild. No, I have Google Voice. So I have like a separate number, but yeah. Um, yeah, if you have Flowey, you can add in text messaging and a VA can manage it. Uh, or you can manage it, whatever. Um, you can do it through Flowey. Um, for sure. Um, so I would do that. I would either go and, like, and it's funny, right? Like, I know Flowey can do it, but for me, it's like, I would still just do it through a phone. Like, I think that's just easier. Like, than having to like figure it out. But anyway, do it in Flowey. Um, you can definitely do it in Flowey. And uh, even and ca and still have the Calendly ones because that goes, it, it, it's different, right? It comes from a different number. It's like different. It's you. It's like, hey, it's Alyssa. I'm super excited. We're going to chat in about 15 minutes. Um, I'm just reviewing my case notes for you. Uh, you know, looking forward to it. Please just make sure that you're in a quiet place because I want to make the best use of our time. Talk soon. Mm -hmm. right like it's different than Callum like you're a person and I actually had the sales guy at some point tell me like exactly what you're saying and I was like I don't know if I want to do that because it's so much more manual work but he said um record like a voice message and send that yeah and more versatile yeah so, yeah and then faster just read the script and send it yeah well it's the same voice message every time yeah. Like you literally just have it as a link on your phone. And then you, what I would do is I would just go like, hey, Debbie, just recorded this super quick. Uh, looking forward to chatting with you in 15 and then add that in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Like, yes, it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work. So again, your call, if you're going to do that, that's what we do. And it is very much the reason that we have an 80% show rate. Yeah. Okay, so that's thing number one. Thing number two is I would do follow up afterwards. I would focus. I, I wouldn't even worry right now about increasing your conversion. Um, I would focus on the show rate, getting that to 80 percent, because if you get that to 80 percent and you convert to 20 percent, you'll hit your number. I would worry. I would really do a follow up. So you can you use Flowey? I don't No. What do you use? A jobby. Kajabi. Okay. I'm sure it's the same. Um, you can create, uh, if I say the word pipeline, do you know what I mean? Like a segment? Yeah. Okay. So you can create like a segment, like an automation where it, we call it long-term nurture. That's what we call it. Right. So this is someone who is like, I need to think about not, it's not a hard no. It's a, 
I could probably convert you if I just continued to show you case studies. Wow. Like for the next 60 days, I could probably convert you. Right. So I think it's important that and this is also something that we do manually, but you don't have to. So if you were to put them manually into an automation where every seven days, 10 days, they're getting an email from you. That's not email marketing. That's like, hey, Janice, um, you know, was thinking about you. And and again, every single one is a case study. Like, was thinking about you, and I know that you said you wanted to think, like, always going back to the objection, like, I get you've been burned so many times. I get that it's so hard. Like, each case study is modeled after an objection. And be like, I thought I would show you this. You know, um, I, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here, t- ready to work with you whenever you're ready to go. If you want to hop back on the phone, just hit reply. Or no, I would give them their calendar link. If you want to hop back on the phone and chat a little bit more, I'm happy to do so. Here's the link. Book a call anytime. Like, don't make it salesy, right? Like, book a link anytime. And like, I would test that for 60 days. Okay. Test that for 60 days because if you can get one client a month like that, right? Let's yeah. say let's say three or four people end up uh, for the. Um, let's say three or four people end up following up with you and one converts. Right? Great. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Would you also, if they're let's let's say they're in that whatever you want to call it, sequence of follow up emails for that sixty days, and they're getting maybe an email every seven days or sh- seven to ten days, like you said. Love it. Um, <laughs> would you still put them in the like? nurture email like so they're getting the regular marketing yes they still get your email the marketing okay so this is actually a really good question the more touch point the better so you want them to come to the webinar you want them to come to your facebook live you want them getting the calls the emails from you what i would do i don't know how many email addresses you're allowed to send from in kajabi like i have Lori Kennedy, I have L Kennedy, I have the LK, like I have different um, names that I send from. So I have like Lori at, I have Lori K, right? So I have different ones. So I would make like a different um, name, like a different send from name, like Alyssa W. Yeah. Right. And so it looks different. So it looks like it's you personally. Do you know what I mean? Like, it is you personally, but it's different than your email marketing ones. Yeah. That's a super sneaky tip, and I love it. <laughs> it really helps with open rate. But, um, yeah. I can see that. Totally. Yeah. 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 I see. yeah I won't even say it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, again, it's like if we think about the steps of, you know, lead to client, it's like number one in attention. Right? How do I get their attention? Oh, they're not used to seeing my name that way in their inbox. The beer, right? Yeah, yeah. it's different. Like, what yeah, or, yeah. Or I'm not showing up in their spam filter, like with the different, you know, even yeah. the other ones are going through, and that one didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that. like, so in terms of your workflow and like your days, I would, um. I would have it on your calendar and you'd have to, okay, so let's go back to the, to the, to the goal of getting your show rate to 80%. So your days are probably full on. You probably don't have time in between your enrollment calls to text everybody. Um, I would do it sort of first keep um, time zones in mind. So if you have, I don't know what time zone you're in, what time zone are you in? Central. Central. So we get complaints. Because we'll send Eastern time to people in Pacific time and it's three hours behind. So I'm sending at nine and they're getting a text message at six o'clock in the morning. They're not happy about that. Yeah. So just be, A, be mindful of text time, time zones for texting. If you don't have time in the day, I would just have time in the morning, like set 35, 40 minutes and text all of your people that day. Right? Like just sit there and text them all day. 
um, so that it's done, right? If that's the best you can do right now, that's the best you can do. Like, let's start there, right? Um, and then for people who know show, you can text them and say, hey, um, sorry, I missed you today. Give them the link to reschedule. Here's the link to reschedule if you if you would like to, right? Yep. If you have the space to text them 10 to 15 minutes before their call, you're also going to do that with the little audio. Yeah. Okay. So that's, we're going to increase the show rate that way. Mm-hmm. Um, then we're going to put together this follow-up automation where I would do it for, I would do it. How often do you send email marketing? Two or three days a week. Okay. So I would maybe do it once every 10 days. Like I can do it every 10, you can set it to every 10 days. And I would do that for not, not like eight to 10 weeks. And, and let's track it, right? Like let's actually put some metrics around it that like, okay, how many people went through that follow-up sequence over a quarter, right? If you do it over 90 days, quarter of time, and let's see what happens, right? If you're like, okay, um, you know, uh, 60 people went through, right? For talking a month, right? So you have 21 calls taken in five by 21 minus five is... 16 and the rest were like I have to think about it right so 16 times 3 is 48 if you can convert that at 20 percent right like I mean I don't know that you'll convert those people at 20 percent but 48 right let's say let's say even you know 10 percent of that would be another five people then not bad right you're getting on because they're already warmed right? They might just need more time. They might, and you might convert none. So let's see. I, another quick question that just came to my mind is at the end of that funnel or like sequence of, you know, eight to 10 weeks, because I have like my self-directed program, which is cheaper. Should I then promote that to them? Be like, Hey, by the way, if cost was the issue, I don't know how I would word that, but like, you know, okay. As the oh, other yeah. It's, Yes. So the advice that we've been giving on this is you do a flash sale once a quarter of the low ticket item. You don't downsell it. You actually just sell it straight to your entire audience and then you upsell your high ticket from the low ticket. We go, we found that that works better. Even all of our, like our clients in Mastermind, who are well above six figures, that's what they do. No one really downsells because it's shitty. Like, it's gross. It's like, oh, like, you, oh, you can't afford it. You want this next thing? Like, in this same call, it does, it's not, that's not an integrity call. Like, that's not a, you're just trying to, like, that to us feels like you're just trying to make money. Right. Right? right. So, um, and, yeah. So, that's what we do. Okay. To the entire audience, do a flash sale, meaning my whole list. People that I have it qualified. People who have, so the only people, uh, I mean, listen, people who are on your list, they're going to see it. They're going to see it on social media. You do a quarterly sale, right? Um, you try and exclude your clients from the emails, right? Your current clients. And yeah, anybody who has a call book tag who said no, I wouldn't. I mean, again, you're doing it front facing, so people are going to see it. So the the risk is always: are you going to lose clients who had potential clients who had calls booked with you that week to the lower priced offer? So that's always sort of the risk. So what we do is we do the flash sale at the beginning of the quarter because then we still have the rest of the quarter to make up, in your case, the fifteen sales. Mm, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Do you do you list the price of that then? Because like I'd still want to qualify them over the phone uh, for the low ticket thing. <laughs> you want to make those sales over the phone? I don't want to, but I I don't 
I don't, well, I don't give people the link to sign up to that without feeling like they're a good fit for it. Why? Um, How much is the product? 567, which needs to go up. <laughs> um, because uh, I, I have a, I do have a guarantee, like money back guarantee. Um, I don't want anyone signing up that I don't think is actually the right fit. Cause I've had folks who are like, I have tooth pain and I'm like, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, we're not talking about that kind of, it, but they're like, I'm so desperate. I'll do anything. It's a good question. And maybe that's just a mindset thing. I'm not sure I'd have to think about it. I feel like if. I'm going to leave that with you. It's not a good use of your time. Uh, right? Not if you want to hit this six-figure goal because really, right, what we look at when we look at metrics, the majority of your revenue comes from your offer number one, yeah. right? If you were to if you were to hit 15 clients a quarter, right, at your current price point, you'll make six figures. Mm -hmm. If you sell five to 10 of these low ticket a quarter, you'll blow way past it. Yeah. And then the people in this low ticket can then, if one or two of them each quarter ascend, it'll also work towards, you just don't have these metrics yet because you don't know, right? We don't know how many people who buys a low ticket actually ascend. We can't count on it, right? So it, we're just going to test for this year and we're going to play around with different strategies. Um, we're going to play around with different strategies. So what I would say, what I would say is do it open. Don't get people on the phone. See who buys. Try and upsell them. If it doesn't work, go back to getting them on the phone. Um, question. How do you execute the upsell? Like, is it like on the, after they purchase, like it's the next page? Yeah. So how long is the low ticket program? They have access for a year. Ooh, I would definitely shorten that. We got on. Okay. To like four months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my full program. The reason I do that is because, so come on, let me get into this. This is complicated, but. I give them a full year because they don't get the one-on-one -on -one coaching component. They don't get any guidance. So I'm like, right. well, you know, I'll give you a little bit extra time because you are on your own on this. Um, but my guarantee is if you finish the course, like you do all the work and you could basically show me like I've done everything, all the steps of your program. If you finish that within the first 20 weeks and you don't get results, then I give you that refund I, I could give you the refund if you asked for it so we'll have to change the extra we'll have to change that guarantee for yeah. sure you can't get you can't scale that as a guarantee because they can show you everything and lie and then you're gonna get give them the money back like no so I think instead of giving them their money back you can give them extra time in the program the mm. Right. So if you shorten it to three, I would shorten it to three months because the whole thing is, right, they need your coaching. The reality is, is that they're not likely going to get the best results without working with you directly. Mm -hmm. Right. But this gives them an opportunity to try it and whatnot. So if you shorten the program to, you know, three months or four months, then closer to the end, then you can get on like a follow-up call with them and you can qualify them and ascend them, mm -hmm. right? And if you want to, you can apply 50% of the cost of this program to upgrade. Not that. Okay. And give them a deadline. If you upgrade by X date, you can apply 50%. I'll apply 50% of the amount that you already paid. You keep this program and we'll ascend up there. So now... You have clients coming in from follow-up. Now you have clients coming in from this low ticket and you're still working on, you know, you're still um, 30 to 40 calls a month at an 80% show rate. If you do that, you'll hit your 100K. Mm. Okay. There's definitely lots change because that's flipping how they, 
I usually have always done it. It's like for the folks who are like, hey, I'm on disability. I haven't made, I haven't been working for however many years. I have no money. I was homeless last week. I'm like, oh God, I don't even want to offer the the low ticket program because so it sounds so dire, but um yeah, okay. Cause I usually will downsell, like you said. So I have to figure out how to up. You can downsell it on the sales call, but I would also flash sale it once a quarter to your whole list. Look that. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Okay. That's a lot to process, but I like it. And I've thought about doing a, a, a sale on that before, but never executed it. So mm-hmm. it was an idea, but I never did it. So, yeah. Now you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Well, I feel like you have some good action steps. Huh? Yes, I definitely do. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, let me know how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm going to put it all into uh, execution and put, put it in. I'm going to implement everything you said, but I am eight months pregnant. And so I am. You're eight uh, months pregnant? <laughs> it might take a little while. So when you hear back from me, it might be like, okay, <laughs> well, then you have permission to slow down because that's, that's wild. wild. That's all yeah. I <laughs> Um, I would fully do a flash sale before you go on maternity leave. Oh, yeah. 100%. I would like do it like next week. Yeah. yeah. And see how it goes. And then you have a nice little cash. What's a good percentage? I mean, is it stupid to even ask that? What's the um, price again? It's 567 but maybe I should up it. I don't know. Because like the 1900 it just seems like. No, it's about, you want the low ticket to be about a third-ish. Okay. So, like, what's nineteen hundred divided by three? Yeah, it's about six thirty-three. So you're not far off. I think that's fine. I would maybe get them to save like one hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Yep. Like it's like a spring. Yeah, a spring promo. I'm having a baby, so you get a discount. Yeah, but I'm having a baby. I'm not going to be able to take on clients for a little, like more clients for a little bit. Here's the only way that you're going to be able to work with me. I'm offering it as a discount. If you've ever considered working with me, if you've had a call with me, like, yeah. I love that. And let's see how many. That's going to go in. That's going to go in like my maternity leave email list too. Just yeah. Kind of that. And like, yep. In the meantime, while you're yep. waiting for well, because my schedule's locked. Yep. Check this out. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yep. Good. Love that. Okay, great. Yeah. Amazing. Well, you're welcome. Good luck. Let me know how it goes. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I know this was helpful. Uh, And we will all talk soon. Bye. Love it. Bye. Bye.